everyone. I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Matt Carney. Matt, thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Honor to be here. All right, we got to talk about the new album, January Flower. Give me all the details. Yes, uh, very excited. Comes out uh, tomorrow, I think, is what they say. Um, and it's uh, yeah, I'm really proud of it. It's a record I started with some friends out in the desert in Joshua Tree. Um, we were rented this house in the middle of nowhere. We brought all this recording gear and this crazy storm rolled in the most rainfall they'd ever recorded in like 50 years or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, our house was off the grid in the middle of nowhere. We had no power and none of our gear worked. So we just ended up pulling out a guitar, me and a friend and just starting to write song. We started to write songs by the campfire and, um, it took on the kind of the spirit of the record of this kind of organic acoustic thing that I'm really, really proud of. How many days were you without uh, electricity? Uh, basically the whole time, you know, I, they started coming back on and it was in the middle of, I mean, when I say in the middle of nowhere, it was like, yeah. you could not see a specific house for miles. You had to drive down this dirt road that became a la a river when the rain happened and there was no Wi-Fi, no phones, nothing. Mm -hmm. So my family thought I was dead probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it ended up being this really special time. My best friend from high school was there who's a painter. He's a really good, talented, fine art painter. So he was in the corner just painting. And me and my friend Eli were just sitting by the stove writing songs. And it, and it was um, a really special time. It reminded me of when I started writing songs, just me and a guitar and some friends. Well, I, I heard a quote from you saying that this album helped bring back the joy of making music. So I guess that's what you're talking about is kind of going back to the roots and the acoustic beginnings. Yeah, that you know, that I I said that, that that was one of the goals when we started this record was I really want this to remind me of why we started doing this. You know, it's I've been doing this a while and that's such a gift that I'm able to make music and I've been able to put out a few records. Um, but just really re recapturing that feeling when there's no audience, there's no consumer waiting, there's no like, is this going to work at radio? Is this going to license for television? Does this fit my demographic? You know, it's just like, man, let's just write songs that we love. I want to write music that reminds me when I started, when I was just trying to make right. records for my little brother in the car, I would t drive him in my Honda Civic and I'd be like, does my little brother like this? And that was kind of the new goal. Just like, let's do something we love and we find joy in and that are, that we will make music for our friends, you know? Well, and not to sound complainy, cause I don't want to put that type of vibe onto you, but thinking about all those things and is this record going to be received by the fans in the, the business side it's yeah. a, it can be a real drag right and and it does suck business sucks the fun out of anything i mean I, is my thing <laughs> well i mean it doesn't you know like my last job was at starbucks so uh it's more fun than that as far as like being <laughs> able to buy a car or like you know like the fact that people support what i do so that side of it is not doesn't get old the fact that i get to make a living doing music but yeah i think the the but that never drove anything that was never a decision of why i started making music none of the great songs you write are based on that they're based on something that is deeply rooted in your own experience in your own heart and people feel that and they connect to it and that ends up being more successful than anything you try to write for something you know um so yeah that that recapturing that like first love of what music is was really at the center of this record. Matt, I have to go back to Starbucks. I've got a couple questions. <laughs> Do you still have a lot of the recipes memorized in your head at home? Oh, could yeah. you throw together the perfect chai latte? Oh yes. I, um, I, yeah, I love being a barista. It might've been my favorite job other than music. Cause it was so social. Um, you couldn't really make any money doing it, but, but, uh, I mean, probably make some great benefits, but, yeah, um, great benefit. but, uh, but I, I do, I have an espresso machine. That was my COVID purchase was this like Italian espresso oh. machine. Cause I freaked out. I'm like, how am I going to make lattes? Mm -hmm. And so I do, I've, I am definitely, my barista chops are still there. I'm working on my art latte art. That's been something that wasn't really. Oh, like with the foam. Oh yeah. Like making a little like designs. Clovers. And yes. Yes. I've only got like two, I've got a heart and, uh, and a heart. That's what I got. <laughs> a heart and a broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> and a, like a lopsided heart. Those are my two moves. I think that's a lima bean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or a kidney bean. Uh, I want to talk about the song Powerless, because as you mentioned, this album, you, you started writing and it was all acoustic because the electricity and the power was out. So yeah. uh, obviously the word powerless can take on so many meanings, uh, figuratively and literally. Um, let's dive into this song and dissect it for me a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, it was the most literal song. It was the first one you wrote on that Joshua Tree thing because so the house was on all on the grid. It was or off the grid. It was all solar paneled. Everything was run off basically that. And so when the clouds came in, we had no power. And it was like, I was like, what are we writing about? And we just started writing about the song. I was like, powerless. I just was joking. I was like, this is actually kind of like, this means something. And, you know, those feelings in your life where you don't have control and there's like a beautiful surrender in those. Sometimes you can kind of embrace them, you know, in the, in, in the context of a relationship that someone you love so much that you're just like, man, I don't even know how to live without you. Like you've won. I'm powerless. When it comes to us, I'm powerless. And that just really took on a lot of meaning, especially when 2020 hit. We had written the song before that. I was like, whoa, this even means more. Um, just that sense of like surrendering to something and allowing that peace and freedom to come from surrendering to it is was really at the core of the song. So speaking of 2020 and obviously COVID, um, what's been the big pivot for you in terms of releasing this album now when it's hard to support with touring uh, and get out there to see the fans in a lot of states and cities still? Um, What's the what's the COVID plan for you? Uh, You know, we're still piecing it together. Um, What that means and what it looks like. It's been really fun to create like a lot of video content. We Mm -hmm. I've made the best videos I've ever met in my my life. Um, There's. I just, they've really come together and it's been really fun working with the director, Sam Boyette. We've, he's helped me and let me partake in that. That's kind of what I wanted to do in high school is I wanted to be a director and I wanted to do film <laughs> before I wanted to do music. I actually didn't start doing music until I was in college. But, um, so it's, uh, part of it is I get to recapture this love of like, I wanted to be a director. So we've been making a ton of content for YouTube and some really special videos, which we wouldn't have had time to do maybe to create treatments for everything and, and go out and shoot. Our Grand Canyon video, I think we shot for a week and I'm playing this like cowboy Texas golfer. It was like this ridiculous yeah. story that took on this real life. And I, it's like the, my favorite video I've ever made. Are um, you a yeah. golfer in real life? I am definitely. Uh, musicians don't talk about it, but there are a lot of us, a lot of musician golfers out there. Um, I, Especially this year, we've been playing a lot because there's not much else you can do. And I love it because it takes you out of your head it reminds me of like yoga or something where you're, I'm such a, my mind races always with song ideas, work things. And we, golf's so hard that you can't, you have to kind of be in that moment. It's like the Zen kind mm-hmm. of practice. You have to be in the moment and focus only on that shot. And I love that. It's like good for my ADD brain. So this question might feel like a bit of a, a stretch, all right? So if I'm connecting wrong dots, I'm sorry. Um, but you started to record this album, the latest one, uh, January Flower in Joshua Tree, all right? And then you have the song Grand Canyon. I know it's not necessarily about the Grand Canyon, but you're talking about the giant space between, you know, two people in a relationship. Yeah. Um, do you like camping and like the national park systems? Cause I, totally. I, I all of a sudden was like, ooh. Yes, yes. I am from Eugene, Oregon. I am okay. a sixth generation Oregonian. So my family was like, remember Oregon Trail? Did you have that game as a kid? I love Trail, you Oregon have Trail. to get provisions. Yes, yes. Like like Johnny died of dysentery, you know, that thing. Um, that was my family. So we came over, we settled in Oregon from on the covered wagons or on covered wagons. And so, yeah, it's deep in my blood. My grandpa would take me backpacking. My brother's a big backpacker. So, yeah, that like actually this record really kind of I wanted to touch a little bit on that. This, mm-hmm. this So a lot of the sometimes I have more like urban themes or there's the settings feel more urban. There's records that feel more like you're in a city, like bumping into people. This record, I felt like I wanted this expansive feeling. And so, yeah, like Grand Canyon is a song about not really about the Grand Canyon, but that kind of space between people. Mm-hmm. Powerless feels kind of like you're. I don't know, somewhere out there in the middle of nowhere. A lot of the imagery felt natural and it just seemed to fit for this record. It seemed like the world that my record needed to exist in. Uh, Back in the day when we could go out to see concerts, you've toured with a lot of great people. Um, Sheryl Crow, Train, John Mayer. Um, Did you take the opportunity to watch their sets each night? Uh, Or occasionally, not every night. Sometimes you just got to go to the catering room. (laughs) Yeah, right. Um, We definitely watched a lot of that was early in my career, Um, especially we were on that John Mayer continuum tour. And um, that was such a I didn't know, realize at the time it would be kind of a historic moment for him. And just us being flies on the wall, getting to watch that was really special. But his band was so good. We often 
we'd go out to front of house. That's a lot of times we see the artists. They go out and sit kind of where the mixing guy is. You can kind of camp out by him. And we watched that show often, almost every night, just because it was so good and his band was so good. We were like going to school every day, just learning. It was one of the first big tours I'd ever done. Uh, let's talk about backstage camaraderie. Uh, is it easy to create friendships out on the road or is everyone so set on their path and what they got to accomplish that day city to city that it's hard to even create those relationships? You know, every every artist is different. There's bands, I won't name names, that definitely don't, you know, aren't that way. There's right. I, I call it like the they're always walking away kind of people, you know, like you're walking by them backstage and you're like, Hey, how are you doing? Cool. All right. I hey, have a great day. You're having a good time. And like, they're getting farther away. They're like 50 yards away. You're like, I guess, okay, I guess our conversation is over. You're, yeah. you're, you're now 75 yards away. But the great tours are the ones that feel like summer camp and you, um, you get to, you bond with people. You, some of my favorite tours, we were on tour with Judah and the Lion and Parachute and this band. And we were all playing songs with each other and they were like, you know, I did a tour with Ingrid Michaelson that was like that. When when you get that sense, it really makes it special, and it does feel like summer camp. And um, and you do form really cool relationships on the road. Some of my best friends are people that have played bass for me or guitar for me or, mm -hmm. you know, friend of house. And um, I, I'm so grateful the experiences you get to share doing stuff like playing shows. It's crazy. Well, you've topped multiple Billboard charts. Um, you've claimed the number one spot on iTunes, uh, 2.5 billion global streams. Before you put out an album like you're about wow. to do right now, January Flower, do you set goals or do you just sit back and <laughs> let's go for the ride? I don't set goals. Maybe I should, actually. I should have more goals. Um, I I don't. I I mean, I have like a, 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 a plan for the art and I have a mm -hmm. goal for what the project needs to be and what it needs to become for me in, in a, a form of expression. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope it does well. I hope every record people like, sure. um, but no, I never, you know, it's, and it's always, it's never what you think. It's like the records and the songs that you think are, this is the one never are. And then there's like these surprise moments, things you had written off or songs you'd written off. Nothing left to lose. My first single was never supposed to be a song, a single, and it's like still one of the biggest songs I've ever had. Um, so I, I've learned to kind of just, once it's out there, it's like you just watch and you, one of my friends said, it's like the George Foreman grill. You <laughs> set it and let it, you know, he'd be like, your album, just set it and let it, bro. It's just going to do its thing. So yeah, that's been my philosophy. Matt Carney, the new album is called January Flower, due out on May 21st. What excites you about putting out new music? I mean, it's so... Um, it's just so part of who I am and it, I'm just so wired to do it. It's it's like a that I get to put out in a, a piece of expression that I believe so much in that might mean something to people is really a gift. And um, I'm, I'm a songwriter. You're in my studio, Nashville. I love playing live shows, but at my core, I'm a songwriter um, artist that loves being in the studio, creating a piece of a perfectly crafted song production is just like i mean there's, it's like the greatest high when you get a song that falls out of the sky and is like this thing that felt like god wrote it and handed it to you and you're like how did i ever write this is like that is like the crack i'm addicted to i just it gets me up every morning i'm in search of those songs in those moments they're just i can can't get enough of them and on the flip side what's the scariest thing about putting out a new album <laughs> Uh, so many things, too many things. You're, you're definitely vulnerable. Um, you know, there is an audience now and you want them to receive it. And you know, there's like, you don't, you, you do, you do start this thing just for love and like this passion, but then there's like, you buy a house and you have a kid and you've mortgage and you, there is this weird thing. You're like, this is not the most job security. Like I did not pick the best job for job security. Like this is the most weird, um, lottery ticket job I've received and it can go as fast as it comes. So I think, you know, that's why I try to make every record like it's my last. And I really do approach them that way. And I think over the years you you, I've realized that like, man, I, I think the fans feel that I think people get that feeling like, wow, he really gave me something that his blood, sweat and tears are that has value to, to me. And that's the goal, at least that I'm trying to do every time.
The new album, January Flower, I know you started writing it while at Joshua Tree uh, without power, um, but by the end of it, you were doing some of the writing and recording back home. Can you hear the difference personally of which songs were Joshua Tree songs and which songs oh, were home songs? Yeah, I mean, because there was a couple that were like older. One of the things I loved about this creative process was we had a whole year more than we intended to sit. We're sitting around. So too I, much time. Yeah, my yeah. I'm like, what am I doing? Uh, but what was cool is I, I mean, I've written so many songs over the years that I, there'd be like three or four things that you're like, man, I love that song. I just never could nail it in. I would work on them. And I found like, can't look back was a song that we released already. That was one of those that I'd like had this idea and I couldn't land the verses. And then all of a sudden one day in my living room, I stumbled upon it. So it definitely gave me more creative space to kind of do that and search for things. Um, and I don't know if you would know all the songs, the difference, what were written in Joshua tree and what weren't, but the framework was definitely set up in Joshua tree. Um, and maybe some, a little more of the pop moments that like hit a little harder, which I, at first I didn't know how they fit in, but now I really love how they kind of round out the record um, and make it like feel urgent. You know, yeah. some of that stuff happened in the studio here in Nashville um, that weren't Joshua Tree moments. All right, enough about you. Let's talk about other music. If you were stranded by yourself, but you had five albums with you, what five albums do you want? Uh, five albums stranded like Desert Island Records. Um, I think my number one would probably be Paul Simon's Graceland. Uh, it was the first record I remember listening to in my dad's Volvo. Um, and it was the first record I remember really being like, whoa, music is something special. It was like, he, we'd list, we shared this moment together. I was a little kid, he'd play it in the car. And there were these Lady Smith Black Mambazo, this like mm -hmm. African vocal choir would sing with him. And I just was like, this is, and I still want my, it's still my favorite record of all time. I, I mean, that's uh, she's got diamonds on the soles of her shoes. Yeah. You can call me Betty. Betty, will you call me? Call me out. Yeah, that one. That was like, that's the hit with Chevy Chase dancing around. Graceland's on that record. Homeless. It's just, it's, there's no better record um, for me. Uh, now, before that album, were you a fan of Simon and Garfunkel? Or was this really, you know, because of your age frame, this was really your introduction? To yeah, that was the, for, I, I mean, I obviously went back and in high school and Eugene, Oregon, it's kind of a hippie culture so they love all that like you know bob dylan and simon and garfunkel and that was all very celebrated so i discovered it and i had simon and garfunkel's greatest hits in my cd book mm -hmm. case logic in high school um but yeah graceland was the first record i really remember being like oh music is something powerful and this is something i really love all right so that's album number one oh, album yes. number two album number two would be bob marley's exodus record um, if I was totally honest, it'd probably be like the legend greatest hits compilation in high school, <laughs> but X, a lot of those songs are off of Exodus, yeah. um, which is where he went, he left, he had gotten, someone had broken into his house in Strawberry Hill and shot, he had gotten shot and he got out of Jamaica cause it was a really intense climate politically and went to England and made a record with like all these engineers and people that had worked with like the clash. And so it's this like marriage of this total awesome reggae record and then like this really cool british engineering musical production scene and he's still like he's it he might be one of my favorite artists of all time the way it's so visceral it feels so good it's spiritual but it also like is like profound and heavy but it doesn't feel heavy i don't know it's just bob marley is like even and the I'm, sad songs feel good. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, like Redemption songs, like the greatest song of all time. I don't, it's just, you can't, I don't know, Bob Marley, there's no one better at, at doing everything. And like the way he can appeal to every single human is just impressive. Like that he can meet an intellectual where they're at and this just like frat boy, like, yeah, bro. You know, like it's just, he's just a good um, dish that everyone would find delicious. <laughs> Uh, and with a pina colada <laughs> in your hand. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a great vacation record. Album number three. Album number three. Uh, let's see, what else would I do? I would put, um, I'd put Tribe Called Quest. Uh, probably. Um, what beats rhymes in life or uh, low in theory? Low in theory. Eighth grade. What's the scenario? 
my love for hip hop music started with Tribe Called Quest, Q-Tip, Can I Kick It? Yes, you can. Can I Kick It? Yes, you can. Um, that That's a huge part of my music. It's like, it was a big influence for me was this like spoken word thing mm-hmm. um, that I, when I couldn't, when I started doing music, I couldn't really sing. So I would always do these like rhythmic kind of writing as an English major. And I was borrowing a lot from kind of hip hop culture. So Tribe Called Quest would be my first love. I still put it on all the time. Cool. Uh, album number four. Uh, Lauren Hill, maybe Miseducation. Lauren Hill. I don't know. I just I love her. The thing where she's like singing and rapping and like blending organic instruments for me at that season of life. I still just can't get over. It. I don't. It doesn't. I don't get sick of it. Fuji's were a huge thing to me, with like Wyclef and. Um, one time. One time. One time. You know. I just love Lauren Hill. I I don't, you know, she's had her ups and downs, but I just really love that record, Miss Education. It's one of the greatest records of all time. And last but not least, what do you want stranded with you? Um, let's see. I should probably pick something new, modern. Just lately, if if, if I was gonna put 2020 in there, it would be Casey Musgraves um Golden Hour record. A lot of that Nashville songwriting thing I, uh, you know i'm gonna put it in there as a as a late like addition that that one that spot may change year to year but this year it would have been casey musgraves golden hour a lot of my friends worked on that record there's a um some of her band was my band back in the day ian fitchuk is a buddy of mine he produced it he's played on he played on hey mama and some other songs of mine drums and i just love that record it's so beautiful for some reason i can't get enough of it i keep putting it on when we're when i'm cooking dinner and um, yeah, it won the album of the year Grammy, and I think it deserves it. Um, what does it feel like to you when you discover new music or a new artist? I mean, I guess it's just uh, part of my life. I, I am, I am a constant. Uh, I just keep looking for albums. I'm I, the thirst for new music is great in me. I listen to every New Music Friday. Uh, I just like to know what's going on. I'm inspired by young artists. Um, I've been doing this for a minute. So, you know, I meet bands. There's a band called Dreamer Boy in Nashville or this artist Claro is a singer songwriter. And I just like get inspired by what, what, how they reinterpret things that, you know, are new to them. And yeah, yeah, so I'm always learning and growing and discovering new music. It's one of my favorite things to do. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone gets to discover uh, your latest album. It's called January Flower, due out on May 21st. Matt Carney, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Such It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told, hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.